So it's Manly running from right to left. They're guarding the Ranwick end of the ground. Melrose uses the long kick. It's going down into the MA Noble corner and immediately put to ground with the ball as Ellison. The tackler was Vorton. Harrington. Wing three quarter for South in five. Boyle. Little stooge off and spinning it back to Baker to kick and it's landed about. But it's got back down inside the 22. Melrose looks for his flankers. He runs towards the Bostead wing but comes back in field. There was a swinging arm in the tackle. Referee was sitting right on top of it but let it go. It was Darren McCarthy who let it, uh, let it rip. This is close and look at the South Sydney boys going in. They're mean. They're hungry. Gerard, I reckon it's their only chance to be honest with you. They've got to go in and they've got to hit. And after they've done that, go back in and hit some more. Blake. And when I say that, I mean legitimately. Bronco de Jura. Chunky, fullback. Cochran and Hasler making the tackle. Harrington, big lump of a winger. 15 stoner. 30 metres out from his own line. Blindside, that man is um, hardy. Plays it tough. Tackler close, blonde-headed man down low in 10 is Ryan. Kick by Ellison, down. Eight metres out from the Manly line. Tony Melrose takes it back, supported by Carey, hit by Darren McCarthy, who has gone out there very fired up. He's made some pretty vicious uh, tackles in the opening seconds. Right across the ground, and Hasler got away from Hardy, got away from another beat Fennec. He's going well. He's got away from Coleman. Des Hasler, magnificent run, ending about five metres on his own side of the halfway. But South will have to tackle a whole lot better than that. This is Harvey reaching the halfway. Ryan. Dummy half, Cochran. Blake's calling it. That's him. Thompson. Again, McCarthy in the four jumper goes in to assist in the tackle. Together with Ellison. The kick by Melrose. And it's a good kick by Tony Melrose. He's been to the cricket ground plenty of times. Both in the league and union jumper. And that experience will stand him in good stead. Touch judge in. As we welcome in our co-commentator, former South coach Bill Anderson. The game started off in great fashion, and I think South Sydney, if they've got any chance of winning this match, they've got a score in the, uh, in the opening minutes. If they can get first blood, if they can get first points on the board, I think that'll greatly boost their confidence and their chances of winning. So it's a South Sydney scrum feed, and it's in, and it's a penalty to Manly. Ward has penalised Coleman for putting it in the second row. Coleman, who was our man of the match on Tuesday night. And Blake it is who takes the, the line finder. So Manley will pull out one of their set moves. Kerry comes around the man who took the tap and he's tackled about five metres from the line. Tackled by Ackery. Then they run a train and the third man drops off and goes blind. And this is ha um, Harvey. And he's forced back by the South defence. And so they run another train and Cleo drops off and he is tackled again by the South forwards. Three metres outside the South Sydney try line. A try here could be absolutely disastrous for South. And it's looking good for Suffer Manley as Close gets back inside and he's gone in the score. That might be just one simple try, but uh, what bothers me is just what it will do to the South Sydney confidence. They've been hitting with everything they've had in their uh, in their kit. And Manly, cool, calm and collectedly, put on two set plays and then spun it ever so wide. And Chris Close jinked and got back inside Darren McCarthy. He had Neil Baker running at 360 degrees. And bingo, first try to Manly. That was just the start that South Sydney didn't want. We can see that Manly moved the ball quickly along their back line. Thompson threw a second man pass, cutting out Ryan and picking up close. And stepped off the right foot once, stepped off the right foot twice. Beat Baker on the inside and he goes over to score the first try of the match. Chris Close 
scoring the try. He's had a magnificent season, this man, close. And with Cleal in the centres, they, they form a tremendously uh, physical centre combination. In fact, I wouldn't mind seeing Close and Cleal against Miles and Meninga. That would be an interesting duel. Size-wise, it'll be a fair dinkum blockbuster. Melrose has got an easy one. Or is there an easy kick in a preliminary semi-final? He's got it. Manley leading south. 6-0. Five and a half minutes into the game. Well, probably doesn't need saying, but South have almost got to come back and score straight away for mine. Souths are going into the match with one great advantage, and I think that, that is they've got nothing to lose in the game. But I've for a long time thought that Manly were the underachievers of the competition. I think they're the dark horses of the semi-final series. Oh, Carey is all but gone right through South Sydney. That's the second time the South's defence has been shown up by going high. Cochrane getting a pass away. Blake took a high tackle, not in possession. Well, took a slap over the chin anyway. Played by Carey, spun through Thompson, gone to Melrose, holds it back, hits clear with it. He can't handle, that's knocked backwards by South, Harrington to play it. But I was saying that's the second time that the South's defence has been highlighted as deficient through trying to make high grabbing tackles. Hasler did it and now Carey's done it. And Rampling has run into the shoulder of Gerard. The Eagles and the Rabbits, have they had some big matches? A cross through Pobji, who's picked up Darren McCarthy. He's taken by Thompson, beautiful tackle by Thompson. Much the smaller of the two men. Miscott has the ball right from him by Cleal. Boasted takes it away, and Boasted will play at 15 in the South area. And already the danger sides of a tired team are starting to show. South have missed some fairly easy tackles. They've dropped some simple ball, and they're the short indicators that they're off their game and they're tired. Close, well taken by Harrington. The ball was lost by Close. It's got to be a knock-on. Let's see how the referee sees it. He agrees, and he's going to pack a scrum down. Now, Pobgy has a little flick of the right hand at Vorton's chin. Wouldn't have killed a fly, to be quite honest with you, but could have brought a penalty, I suppose. One by Souths. Baker short ball. De Jura. Hasler high. Thompson low. Played back to Baker. Given to Coleman onto Ackery. And Souths, it's to be hoped, will stick to their game plan. That shock of the first try can do terrible things to a team, but... Let's hope that they uh, stick to a game plan, try and weather the storm because Manly has started at a cracking pace and South have started badly. Carey's gone for too much in trying to take it. Now he's taking it away across the ground. McCarthy's got a ring around him, but he's away from McCarthy. Out to the 22 line, comes to Baker, beats him. McCarthy comes from behind and puts him down. The Souths are sticking to a game plan in that they're kicking the ball very consistently through Neil Baker, but they're going to have to improve their chase on kicks if they're going to get any value out of them. Melrose, former South Sydney player, put down by three of his former club uh, clubmates. Right back by Harvey, picked up by uh, Ryan. And Ryan, one of the most consistent second rowers in the league, plays the ball. A second man run, hits Cleal with it, Cleal's into a space, finds Hasler. Hasler's gone over the halfway. Here comes Bostead. Bostead will score. Shut the gate. Bostead's home. Right in front of the Bradman stand patrons. Oh, South absolutely opened up. Absolutely opened up to a set play. Two forwards, one going open, one going blind. Cleal it was. Watch them. They head for the open, then Cleal breaks off. He spins off and gets to the blind and he gets rid of them very, very quickly. And then Hasler just takes a short ball off Cleal. Keep in mind he's playing in the centres, Cleal, but twice Manley have scored and twice Cleal's been involved in forward plays. Bosted on the inside, takes it beautifully. Great pass by Hasler. And there's no way in the world you'll catch that man, Bosted. Not unless you've got the Southern Aurora giving you some help. 
No, Noel Cleal stood David Boyle up. He faked a step off the right foot and then he threw the big step in off the left foot to get around Boyle. Stood in the tackle and got the ball to Hasler. And hasn't he been a success story with Manley since he switched from half back to lock forward? Right. He made the break. He looked for support. He found Boosted inside who positioned himself excellently. One of the best wingers in the world, Kerry Boosted. And once he gets a sniff of the try line, there's no stopping him. And in he goes for the second try for Manley and things are looking ominous for the Rabbits. Well, let me tell you something else. It was a great rugby league try and it was a great piece of work by those rugby league cameramen working for 10 sports here at the cricket ground today beautiful stuff well captured so scoreline manly 10 south nothing melrose has the easiest of kicks I think I said earlier, Manly were hot. They're white hot. But I would think that uh, rival coaches, Masters, Moni, and Ryan, will be watching this one and saying, I hope they don't take this form any further. There's John Moni, in fact. 12 0 Manly. Baker starts it. Phil Kerry. Harvey. Vorton. Cochran. For viewers of Rugby League 84, I just had a note dropped in front of me by Peter Falingos. It simply says, Cannon Fodder. Melrose kicks. And finding touch inside the 22 line. 18 metres out from the south line. An easy replay. Dejura. Thompson, another copybook tackle. Set him up, made him run where he wanted him to run, and then hit him with the shoulder and drove him. Play on the 22 line south end. They'll be kicking shortly. Fennec. Ellison. Hit by Gerard and Ryan. Where's Baker? He's falling in behind the play the ball now. Fennec is the dummy half. They use another run with Hardy. Tackle was uh, shoulder high. Referee was right in front of it and said play on. Now it's back to Baker and the kick by Baker is going straight to Tony Melrose on his own 22 line or a little bit inside it. And trouble for South here with Manly link up. Boasted! Melrose backs up. Melrose has gone down inside the 32 line and is held there by Neil Baker but if that's what you're going to get from a kick then you're better off hanging on to it. There just wasn't enough chases. Penalty to Manly. Souths are showing lots of signs of tiredness. They made a kick on that occasion. There was just not a sufficient chase there. Manly realised that Souths were short on their defensive left side. Made a huge break up the right-hand side of the field. And now they've got the opportunity to add a further two points to their score through a uh, five-metre penalty. So often has Bill Anderson said that a kick is only as good as the chase. And that was a perfect example of it. Third grade to the Magpies, eh? By 22 to 16 over the Raiders. And reserves went to the Saints. They defeated the Bears 20 points to 6. Two from two for Tony Melrose. There's a wide shot of the Pat Hill stand, particularly for our Brisbane viewers. Private boxes on the, the top level and plenty of good seats in front of them. But uh, as I said earlier, it's nearly completely circled the cricket ground with undercover seating. The only patch of grass that you can sit on now is the, the Randwick Hill in front of the big Diamond Vision screen over there. 
Here's Melrose. Right in front. 20 out. He's got it. Manley leading by 14 points to nil. Watching the preliminary semi-final from the Sydney Cricket Ground. South are going to take that quick kick off, but they can't do that until the referee's blown the whistle. They were looking for the one they used with success against Canberra. Uh, just looking to see what... What is the miss with Noel Cleal? He's getting some attention from the trainer. And there's a little knock-on. Cleal getting back into position. As we speak, he doesn't seem to be... Anything, anything other than 100% fit. And as we can see on the replay, that was a good decision by referee Ward. Tony Milrose put his arms out to uh, have to stop the ball on his chest, but the ball kicked left, left side and hit him on the arm, and it was a knock-on. Chance here for the Rabbits. Ball played 10 metres out by Mark Ellison. David Boyle hits it up. Now, let's see if Manley can defend. They haven't really been tested. 15 minutes have uh, gone in the match, and it's all been Manley. Attack, attack, attack. This is Hardy. Ellison, flick pass inside for McCarthy. Hardy and Vorton tie him up. Ellison. Well, there doesn't seem to be very much pattern or understanding in that South Sydney set of, uh, set of five. Baker. Here's something they know plenty about. Putting the bomb up. Can they score off it? Uh, no way. But it'll be a line dropout, so they'll come back with the ball. See a strapping on Neil Baker's leg, uh, his left leg, high up. Um, in fact, I, I can almost see the bruising on the leg, so he must have damaged that on Tuesday when he was replaced. Hardy did well. He'll play it inside the quarter. Fennec is the dummy half. Across a dummy to Rampling outside to Boyle. Boyle held by Cochran. He'll be a player of the future, Mel Cochran. Cut out ball to Baker. On to McCarthy. McCarthy's got through Thompson. Holds off Hasler, but Hasler wrestles him to the ground. They're only 15 out south. They've got to score if they're going to get back into this one. Manly are just uh, sailing too sweetly at the moment. They've got wind in their sails. This is De Jura. Fennec gets out from dummy half, uses the referee, gets the ball away to Hardy. Hardy pops it inside. It's come off the face of Harrington. Picked up by Carey for Manly. And the pressure's off for the Eagles. And if that's the most that South can offer, as far as attack's concerned, then Manly are going to have a pretty easy day. Nearly a quarter of the match gone. Harvey. It's noticeable to me, Ray, that Manly have made a slight positional change to what they've done in the early rounds in the competition. Normally we've seen Alan Thompson taking first pass off the ruck, uh, which to my mind has always left them a man short in the back line because Blake didn't go to 5'8", so it meant that the, their 5'8", Thompson took first pass and picked up a centre. But now we see Phil Blake's taking a lot of first passes today and they've got a much longer back line than they'd normally have. Here's the kick from Melrose. He's done nothing wrong so far, Tony Melrose. Niscott. Pretty dangerous practice, leaving yourself up as a sitting duck for a shoulder charge from Harvey. This is Rampling. Plays about five metres south side of the halfway. A dummy to the decoy. They go back to the showground side and Boyle gives it back to Dejura, but all he did was run into the arms of Close. And here comes a replacement to the sideline for South. It's uh, Daryl Neville. Ackery, just looking at the South players to see who's going to come off. Yeah, I'd, I'd think it'd be uh, Michael Pobgy. He came into this game with a doubt. He's been limping virtually since the whistle, uh, whistle went to start the game. And I'd say that's the change that Ron really would be looking to make. Melrose. Taken by Boyle. Blake. Vorton troubles. Cleo. Cleo to the halfway. Gets a pass away to Vorton. 
Cleo backs Vaughton up. He gets a one-hander over to Thompson. They stretch it to the right. They'll score. Here goes uh, Ryan, but he's uh, decided to go up the middle. Ryan, can they support him? He's inside the 32-metre line. Right back by South, and they've come away with the ball, but knocked on by Dean Rampling. Well, that's another sign of tiredness. Dean Dr Rampling dropped a fairly simple ball, but the Manly players should have learned from Tuesday night when South played against Canberra that uh, Fennick likes to rake the ball and to play the ball. He's done it twice today. There goes Michael Clodgy from the field, replaced by Darrell Neville. Fed by Blake, won by Manley. Good heel by Cochran. It's way to Thompson. Thompson looks for his winger coming from the blind post end, but he wasn't able to pop in the ball. Tackled, and there's a brawl broken out in three parts of the ground. Um, Rampling and Harvey were the main contestants. And Ryan is down on the ground. He had an encounter with Ellison. I must admit I thought if that was going to happen, it would happen in the first five or the first ten, but not after 22. So the boys in blue are out there in numbers at the moment. the penalty Ryan still receiving attention Melrose with three from three. They've all been easy, and this one is not uh, all that difficult. There's the Brawongal. <clears throat> That's, um, of course, the first of these two magnificent stands that was completed, and uh, it's always well patronised, the Brawongal. That's everybody's first choice. That Bruwonga we're sitting up on the seventh level. And in fact, we're broadcasting backwards, you believe, on the Manly 10 metre line. So we're getting a horrible angle on it, but still, it's enjoyable sitting up here with a bird's eye view. As Tony Melrose misses his first goal of the match, Manly leading south by 14 to nil. You're watching the preliminary semi final of the NEC Big Game. There's the 22-metre drop kick by Manley at, uh, by South. It's gone down to Manley's carry. And McCarthy goes in and makes the tackle. Dummy half is Gerard pinching five metres. Rampling and Hardy making the tackle. Right four by South, and uh, it's with Manley's Cochran. And he's given six more. Vaughton. Tackle was Ellison. Blake. Melrose. Cleal. Back he goes. He's away from Boyle. Boyle knocked over McCarthy. Then he fended off another. Rampling got rid of him and was put down by Hardy. But Cleal, everywhere he goes, he's causing troubles. 
Harvey's put it down, picked up by Ellison for South on the halfway line. There's no doubting the power of Cleal today. Early we saw him in tight. Harrington getting a beautiful ball and then a magic tackle by Alan Thompson. His tackling today has been a feature of this game, Thompson. Copybook stuff, straight out of the manual. This is Zachary. Mario Fennec, short ball, Coleman, Baker, cut out ball, Neville to the 22 line. About 14 and a half minutes of the first half remaining, Coleman rambling, reaching the 22. Five tackles are gone, the bomb will come from Baker. High kick by Baker. Up they go for it, put down by Melrose. Ackery rakes it back, that'll be play on, no. Well, he's ruled a knock on. Here it is again. Melrose certainly knocked on, the ball went to ground. I can't see how he's ordered a knock on against South. I thought Paul Ackery got his arm to the ball, but we couldn't quite pick it up. Well, he did, but if you notice closely, it came off his hand onto his leg and bounced backwards. Anyway, we're with the play, and South Sydney on the attack, 10 metres out. Baker, McCarthy. McCarthy spearing it back for Rampling. Coleman, South with a chance. Ackery turning it inside, finding. Ooh, he found the Dura. I think Broncos wishing he didn't. McCarthy hit by Hasler and Vorton. De Dura. Coleman. Baker. The bomb. Not a bad one either. Chance here for South. Yes, it's a try. That's a try. Scored by. I believe it was the lot. No, it's the second row of Bill Hardy. Hardy, the second row, of scoring off an immaculate bomb by Neil Baker. Right between the uprights. Gee, it was a good bomb. He had a bit of pressure on him, too, from Gerard. But there was uh, plenty of troubles here for Melrose. And he never really got near the ball. Hardy taking it to ground sweetly, safely. And that's a try. So Souths have come back to 14-4 down. It'll be 14-6 because Baker is only 12 metres out and right in front. They had to do something like that, Bill, didn't they? Because 14-0, that's a big score in any match. But it's a hell of a score in a sudden death semi-final and they had to get points on the board before the break. They certainly did and there could have been no better man there than Bill Hardy in the past. He's shown us what a good ball receiver he is from Bombs. He never took his eye off at any stage and he came up with a four-pointer. Baker gets the extras. Manly leading by 14 points to six. Well, the Eagles have been playing really well. They were aided and abetted by some shoddy South Sydney defence. But maybe that try will give South the injection they need. Melrose taking plenty of time placing it. Kick by Tony Melrose. Boyle calls it and takes it. Reaching the 22 line. That's a penalty for the Rabbits. That's against Harvey. Vorton had made the tackle, and Harvey wasn't happy with that. When Boyle got up, he put him back on the ground. Line finder to be taken by Baker. Here's Boyle tackled by Vorton. And he tries to get up and Harvey leans on him and so the referee rules that he wasn't allowed to play the ball and so Ackery hits it up to the halfway line. 
it might be wishful thinking from the South point of view, but if they can put some more points on the board before half time, and that's 10 minutes away, they could come out and really give this manly side a run for their money. Well, one thing you do know is they won't stop trying. The kick by Baker will find touch, no risk. And the South Sydney fans have got something at last to cheer about. This scrum will go down about 15 metres out from the Manly line. <laughs> Fed by Blake. It's a South penalty. Blake feeding it into the second row with the feed and the loose. I think Blake has said something to the referee. He's called him back. It couldn't have been it couldn't have been too bad, whatever he said. The referee, of course, had that other string to his bow. Hardy's put it down on the first tackle. Oh gee. That's bad for Souths. Now they're back in the, the rather boring pastime of tackling. Played by Ryan, struck four, six more for Manley. This what, is Cochran. That was a bad mistake by South Sydney. Manley hadn't had the ball for quite a period of time, and uh, South had a lot of pressure on. Things were starting to run their way, and they came up with a simple handling error. Oh, just as well, Vorton dropped that. As far as Souths are concerned, they had the overlap. They could have made a lot of ground up the left flank. Hasler. One thing Manly hasn't had to do in the first 30 minutes is actually defend one-on-one. -on -one. The only real defensive test they've had has been from the bomb. They haven't taken a great deal of physical battering, I don't think anyway, from having to make tackles. De Jura. And, you know, to lose the ball on the first tackle when you've been given a penalty by the ref, that, to me, looks like you've let him out of jail. This man is Daryl Neville. He came on replacing Michael Pobgey who looked as though he should never have gone out there in the first place. Boyle. This is the sort of defence that I'm talking about that Manly hasn't been asked to provide for very much of the game. Baker. Put down by Ryan and by Hasler. Played back to Fennick just beyond the 22. Coleman works the blind. Gets off a shoulder, gets into some space, looks inside, and he's flung to the ground, the little fellow. Ten metres out. Can the Rabbits do it on this bomb? It's gone to Baker. There goes the test for Melrose. And underneath it is Carey. Over the line, over the dead ball line. Line drop out. So Souths have put a couple of bombs up to Melrose. They scored off one and another time, but I thought they were done a disservice. Baker's injured. Touch judge is on. Could be some trouble here. South fans giving vent to their feelings. He's going to give a penalty, I think. There's the late hit. And he's given the penalty. Well, you can walk up and throw it over. Oh, Blake went high and late, according to both touch judges. Phil Blake, the offender. Well, just as we were thinking that maybe we'd need the cricket scoreboard, things are starting to turn around a bit, and I hate to remind you, but it all started with the blue that broke out about 10 minutes ago. Maybe if it had started earlier, they would have never been behind. Well, you know, I'm not an advocate of the blue, but it does seem to me that since they put the brawl on, uh, south of... Well, I was merely referring to the fact that you said if it was going to start, you thought it might have started in the first round and not after That's the right. 20th minute. Yeah, point taken. Well, here's Baker. The easiest kick he could ever dream of. Right in front. 11 metres out. No worries. No worries in the world at the moment, apart from the fact that they're still behind by 14 points to 8 South Sydney.
Melrose to restart. This kick has been driving it into that M.A. Noble corner all day. Harrington brings it out as hit by Gerard and Ryan. Dummy half is Mario Fennec. Dummies to Coleman, turns it inside for Boyle, runs into Harvey and Ryan. And Boyle appealing to get up. Spun to Baker. And they kick, and Baker split the winger and the fullback. A good kick by Baker. Gives the runners plenty of time to get down there and do their job. I'm just looking for runners. There's not a lot of them, let me tell you. Hardy was the first man up there. Harrington, a winger. He was the second there, and he made the tackle. Manly are now back inside their own 22. And this is Carey running into the arms of Boyle. About four and a half minutes of the first half to go in our preliminary semi-final at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Gerrard's put it down. South have come away with it. Manly starting to make mistakes. Coleman across to Baker. Baker's got McCarthy with him. There goes Darren. He's up and inside the 22 line. He's going to play it back to Chris, uh, Craig Coleman across and turning it inside for Rampling. And South Sydney are about 18 metres out from the Manly line. And they've got a chance just in front of the half-time siren. Coleman goes the blind. He gets up the middle. This little jockey's eyes half-back. He's got within about six metres of the line. Mario Fennick from dummy half. Passes, finds Baker. It's gone to McCarthy. McCarthy draws them. Gets it to Ackery. He gets a pass away. He finds Ellison. Ellison looks to pass. He does. It's uh, gone to ground and they've still got the ball. On the fifth, Baker's got the ball. McCarthy's hurt his face. Ackery passes, finds Coleman. Coleman kicks. Miscott looked to be offside. There, he's got the ball and scored. Miscott has scored. South Sydney have scored off a great Coleman bomb. The medium of Ziggy Miscott. And I'll be very interested to see this one on replay. I was looking through the binoculars and thinking myself, Jim, Miscott might have been in front of the kicker. But no way in the world, as I see it on the replay, Nisquot taking on Melrose one-on-one, -on -one, and Melrose has been again beaten and beaten badly. Well, I don't blame Melrose for that at all. I just think he didn't get any protection whatsoever from the other Manly players. When the ball goes up, you've got to protect your fullback and support him, and Melrose didn't get any whatsoever. Well, Ziggy Nisquot scores a fair try. I thought for a moment he was in front of Coleman, but he was not and it was proved conclusively by the video replay. And Souths have come right back into this game, and they'll be going to the break in just a few moments' time after pulling back from 14-0. And Baker... Baker with a chance to make it 14-14. He hits it sweetly. And it's 14 points all. Manly and South Sydney at 14 all. With just under two minutes of the first half to go. Well, the big diamond vision screen at the cricket ground has got a few people puzzled at the moment. It's showing 14-12. And the scoreboard at the other ground, on the other end of the Bradman has got Manly leading by 14-10. Channel 10, we've got 14-14. Now the, <laughs> the ground scoreboards are catching up. Talk about confusing. There's nothing worries you more than thinking, oh, I've given the wrong score. Harrington is outside the 22, and I was talking about an injection that South needed, and they've got two of them, both off the bomb. And uh, that's the pattern of play that South knows so well. It's the one they love. They just take it up with simple stuff and go bang. This is Fennec. But now it's Ackery. Ray, in order to put a bomb up, you've got to be within striking distance, and I just think that the Manly's defence is allowing that to happen. They're not tackling with the same urgency that they were early in the game. You can only put a kick up if you're close enough, and Manly are letting Souths get close. There mightn't be many people at the cricket ground, but by golly, they're making plenty of noise. Baker's kick is down in the end goal. It's gone in touch, in goal. It'll come out to the 22-way for the place kick restart by the Eagles. This will be the last exchange, the last set of six is about to start. Timepiece showing 25 seconds to go. 
and 14 all is the scoreline. You wouldn't believe this, uh, the change that's come over this match. Well, you people in Brisbane can because you've been watching it live, but Manly started, and South looked as though they didn't want to know about the tackling caper, low anyway. And then the Rabbits have turned around after what looked like a, a brawl that had broken out across the ground. Here's close. He's tackled on the halfway, but after that, that eruption from the scrum, South have come back and scored two converted tries and kicked the penalty, and they leave the field, these 26 players, with Manly, I suppose, shell-shocked. The Manly are walking off and Souths are running off. 14 points all. Here's the start now of the all-important second half. Only 40 minutes left in this Sydney Rugby League competition for one of these two sides. De Gira, taken by Gerard. Well, Bill, it seems the momentum in the Manly machine dropped away in the last 15 minutes of that uh, first half. What do they have to do to stop uh, South going ahead like they are in leaps and bounds? Well, I think the big difference between the two teams at the moment is in their relative kicking games. Manly only kicked the ball on five occasions in the first half, whereas South kicked it on 12. They got big territorial gains from those kicks, put up two bombs and scored tries from them. So I think that Manly have got to improve their own kicking game and nullify South. South with the ball on the halfway line. Fennec has just been cautioned on the run. Baker kicks. It's a big one down between winger and... Uh, Full back and it's going to go over the dead ball line so it'll come out to the 22 for the place kick restart by Manley. And that's exactly what I was talking about. We could see that Baker got the ball, he's put it dead in goals. Manley have now got a restart with the tap from the quarter line and Souths are going to try and pin them there, get the ball back and put up another bomb. I'll be looking for Melrose in this half to drive the ball consistently and on the early tackles deep into South's area. This is Harvey. Not quite reaching the 32 metre line. Here's Gerard. I'm just watching Mario Fennec. He strikes for the ball in the early play of the balls a lot. And uh, it's interesting to see when he's lifting that foot. And that's better play from Manley. Melrose, he was put off by kicking on his right foot, but took it on his left foot and got a good territorial gain. Now Manley have to keep South here. Ball played by De Jura. Coming away with it is Neville. Neville comes to Hasler and Harvey, and he's thumped to the ground, and that hurt him. This cricket ground is uh, like a block of granite at the moment. Here's Boyle. And they're back nearly to the halfway line. That's their third tackle, Sass. As it's spun through to Coleman onto Baker. Baker turns it and finds Hardy, runs into Gerard. And that's four gone, so Baker may kick on this tackle. It's with Fennick. He decides to go for a dummy half run, then throws the cutout ball. Neville got inside close, crossed the halfway. Thompson rounded him up. Five tackles gone for South Sydney now. And it's Baker, the man to watch this man. There goes his kick. Came off a south of a manly player. Back to De Jura. De Jura is tackled. He's restarted the tackle count. Gone to Ackery. Now to Boyle. Boyle stands. Says, who wants it? Nobody wanted to run. Boyle to play it. Seven or eight metres in the Manly's area. There goes Fennick from dummy half. They should have been awake up to him. He loves to run from dummy half. You always got to have good marker defence when you're playing against Fennick. Coleman turns it. Hardy hits it up to the 22 line. And Souths have come back. Now with the same drive that they left us with at the end of 40. This is Ellison. Oh, Vorton's copped it. Vorton's head clashed with one of his teammates. And Manley are playing with 12. Here's Coleman on the fifth tackle. Coleman to play it. Vorton is still on the ground. Plays it back to Ellison. Off it goes to Baker. Up goes the bomb, the one they've been working for. And they go up for it. Niscott, Niscott! Niscott throws the pass. Ackery gets it to Hardy. Hardy! Hardy scores! South Sydney have hit the front. Well! Niscott was standing there. He really... He couldn't believe it. He had the ball without a contest. See it again. Niscott stands there and then he makes this charge at the line. And then he throws the ball and just says, I hope. There's Bostead going in there giving some protection. Miscott comes down with it. He wasn't really challenged. 
It'll come back to Ackery. Ackery says, I'll get rid of this as quick as I can. And Bill Hardy, standing out on the wing, goes in to score. And Souths are leading by 18 points to 14 after being down 14-0. If you're having success with something, why wouldn't you keep doing it? Souths worked their, the play down into Manley's quarter, put up the bomb. We can see they've had success from it in the first half. Niscott came up with the ball, was held in the tackle, couldn't get his arms free at first, finally did threw the ball back to Ackery. Ackery looked and saw Bill Hardy, would you believe, unmarked on the wing, and in he goes for another great South Sydney try. Souths have made one of the, the greatest recoveries I think I've ever seen at the Sydney Cricket Ground. And I guess some of the old stages here would be scratching their head and saying, when did we see a comeback better than this one? Here's Baker with his most difficult kick. He's 22 out and 10 in. But the way they're going at the moment, he'll probably zot this. Vorton has been told to stand still. Baker's kick, oh, it's gone like an arrow. That's a bullseye. Souths leading by 20 points to 14. You're watching the NEC big game from the cricket ground. And this is sudden death football. Time out. They're looking for a football. Here comes one. Horton appears okay, but he took a smack on the, uh, I think, on the nose or the point of the chin from the head of one of his own players. Early in the game, it was South Sydney that was showing signs of tiredness, but now they're playing with all the enthusiasm of 18-year-olds playing their first game in first grade, and Manly, really, they're shell-shocked. They can't believe what's happened. They're starting to move up slowly in defence and miss tackles, and I just don't know if Bob Fulton can do anything to arrest this slump. Here's Mario Fennec, out from dummy half again. Fennec to play it. They'll just grind it down, and then they'll kick. Here's Baker. There goes the kick. Oh, it's out on the full. Well, they sure won't take anything off his pay packet, Baker, for making a mistake like that. Without him, I, I doubt strongly the Rabbits would be here. Outstanding player in the year 1984, Baker. Here's Kerry. He's got DeJuro to beat. And a oh, good tackle by the fullback. That's a good tackle by Bronco DeJuro. And there's a brawl. A brawl back in the middle of the ground as we see Kerry taken by Bronco DeJuro. Now, let's all just go back to our seats and work this one out. Well, the last ball was what turned it all around for South, so I just wonder if this one's going to have the same effect on Manly. Bobby Fulton. With the head lowered. Ward is talking very, very emphatically to Mario Fennec. That was a good piece of work by Dejura. That could have well been the equaliser. So he's going to put the scrum down. I just think that Bob Fulton would have been much happier had Carey tried to beat his man on the inside, not the outside. It was the first tackle after scrum won by man, and they could ill afford to lose possession, which they have. It's played by Coleman. Harrington trying to gain a couple of metres just to get it into a safe area. They'll use four or five here, probably. Ellison. Goodness gracious, when you look at the two sides on paper and look at some of the names, it's quite an amazing scoreline. Willie, Ron Willie, there with Paul Satan, Terry Parker. Okay, okay. Of course, Willie had a, a memorable career with the Eagles. Here's the kick coming. Hardy drops it down between the winger and the fullback, so it's a good kick by Hardy. He's given his runners a bit of time to get down there. Here comes Bostead. Bostead scored a try for the uh, Eagles, but Ellison has got him with McCarthy. And so Manley has to turn around and go back, and that's all part of the art. Turn him around. Here's close. Big Chris Close has made a run, and what a run it was. Taking play 28 metres out from the south line. Thompson across to Melrose, now to Blake, on to Hasler and to Cleo, and Cleo cut down by Baker.
right around the bootlaces. That's Vorton with the ball. This is Hasler. They're working towards the South 22, but the Rabbits are in front by six points now. And they're in there, and they're certainly not going to let Manley get any easy ground. It's a penalty to Manley against the tacklers, Fennick and Boyle. Yes, they're not going to let Manley get any easy ground, Ray, but the further this game progresses, the more I believe that the team that's going to win it, and it's very much anyone's game, is the team that can keep their calm for the rest of this match. If you can keep your calm here, of course, the scoreline only 20 to 14. The team that can play sensible football, keep their cool, will win this one. And I see Steve Hegarty is on the sideline for Manley. As Manley ruck it in, they may put the same play on that uh, Close scored off earlier. It's a dummy back to the blind. There's nothing like it. And this is Melrose. Well, the man they'll be looking for here is Noel Cleal. He's dangerous 10 or 15 metres out from the opposition line. It takes two and three to pull him down. And Fulton will be looking for plenty of work from him in these situations. Harvey. Harvey's about eight metres out. And he is revving up for a run behind the play of the ball, Cleal. The Rabbitohs are going to have to weather a hell of a storm here in a moment. Oh, the pass has gone to the ground, but it's play on. Ryan. Oh, it's gone in to touch off the hand of Bostead. They were just boiling it up. It's a pretty simple pattern, really, that Manly uses. They just use some plays around the, the tap penalty and then the stretches on, and it's a real quick stretch and very wide. In place in the Manly team. And the face of Kerry Bostead in that Steve shot shows it all. Glenn Ryan off for Manly. South winning the scrum. Coleman tackled by Hasler. Ellison not held. Gains another seven metres. He's out to the 22 line. Hegarty going to full back is the message. And away goes Darren McCarthy. Souths have lost Ellison at the moment. He's down, clutching at his wrist. There he is, Ellison. It's his shoulder. He's got no feeling there at the moment. So the Rabbitohs will be looking for Baker to kick in a moment. It's with Coleman. Now it's with Dujura. And that was one-on-one. -on -one. Melrose making the tackle. Thompson's probably gone into the scrum, has he? Or is it Cleal that's Cleal. gone into the scrum? Cleal's gone into the second one. There's the kick down to Hegarty. Big day for Steve Hegarty. Back he comes. Tackled by Ackery. Cleal's gone to dummy half. It's a penalty to Manley. He was trying to play the ball forward. Correct ruling by the referee, no question. He's come straight off uh, Ellison. Hegarty finding the line. South playing with 12. Tap taken by Cochran. Given away to Bosted. Bosted taken. Well, the question is now. Michael Andrews coming out for South. The question is, can the Rabbits hang on? Harvey getting a good ball to Melrose. Magic ball to Harvey. Turned inside to Ackery, but he's wearing the wrong jumper as far as Manley's concerned. And Ackery turns them around. And that was panic play by Manley. They'd made the initial break. It was only the second or third tackle. They had plenty of time to settle things down and work, say, on the fifth or sixth. They weren't prepared to do it. Squeezed out a pass that wasn't on, and now they're fourth in possession. Boyle. Boyle, midway between the 22 and halfway to play it for South. Andrews, the fresh man on for South. He's replaced Ellison, it's with Hardy, and Hardy is neatly taken by Melrose, who's now playing uh, at five-eighths for the uh, the Eagles, or centre, centre. into the centre, and here's the Fennick, Fennick has made another bust, Fennick has tackled from behind by Phil Blake, it's got to be a penalty, got to be a penalty to South. Blake had made the tackle, Fennick got up to play the ball, and Blake tackled him again. It's the same, same penalty in reverse, as the one that Ward used a few minutes ago against South Sydney. See the tackle, copybook stuff, and then he tries to get up and Blake pushes him to the ground again. There could be no complaints about that. Now, if Baker can kick this, Manly have got big, big trouble. Even with 26 minutes of time to go, they're six behind. If Baker pots this, Eight points is a tremendous lead for the Rabbits. It certainly is. South Sydney have got great spirit in their football club, and if they get their nose too far in front, Manly just we aren't, won't be able to come from behind. They'll be in a situation where they've got to play catch-up football, and that doesn't suit them. Well, let me pinpoint Baker for you. Firstly, he's got four from four, so he's got everything working okay. He's ten metres in from touch in front of the Pat Hill stand, 
and he's 27 metres out. And Fenwick is telling his players, get after this, because he mightn't get it to go dead. Just looking in the back play, Craig Coleman's a little thinker. He, uh, there was some dirt on the halfway line, which he quickly spread out so that Manley wouldn't have a mound ready-made for a quick kickoff. Here's Baker with what could be a semi-final winning kick. And keeping South in with a chance to play the grand final. That's how important it could be. He hits it. It looks good. He likes it. The touch judges have got the flags up. It's a goal to Baker. And the Rabbits lead by 22 to 14. Quick restart by Manley. The gridiron stand up. But South had reassembled very quickly. And Harrington takes it back. Manley's, uh, well, they haven't really followed that kickoff through very, uh, very well, Bill. It went 50 metres on the fly, and Harrington was able to come out of the 22 before he found a defenceman. And then Souths were able to follow it up with two quick play the balls, and they're only 10 metres off the halfway line after three tackles. The South Sydney Rabbitohs have got Manley shaking. They're leading by eight as Baker tries to do something himself by running with it. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised that's the first time that Neil Baker has tried to run with the ball. Here's Hardy, and that roar down below, it's absolutely, it's deafening. As this, uh, as I said earlier, not a big crowd, but there's a lot of South supporters among them, apparently. And they're roaring for the South Sydney side to go on with it. They haven't beaten Manly this year. They've come through a playoff last Tuesday. They're leading by eight points. They've come from 14 points to zero down in this match. And they are looking every bit as though they're going to put it away. This is Neville around Vaughan. He's into a gap. Oh, he's come into a gang tackle. Two metres out from the Manly line. South Sydney attacking. McCarthy to Coleman. Coleman to Baker. Baker's tackled. Five metres out. There's a South Sydney player injured. It's Daryl Neville. It's by Darren McCarthy going with it. He's two metres out. They may set themselves for a drop goal. It's uh, Baker at dummy half. Coleman is the first pivot. It's a dummy and then he decides to go, the little fellow. That's five tackles gone. Five gone. Finnick is the dummy half. Finnick at dummy half. Goes himself and he's lost it. No, he didn't. He threw it back and hope. And it's Harvey for Manley with the ball. Neville back on his feet for Souths. Cleal throwing dummy after dummy and trying to make ground, but pull down the big man. Andrews in 20. Boyle in 9. Gerard. Souths. They can smell victory and they're hitting now. I think some of them are hitting from memory. Manly with an awful problem now. They're playing against a side that is playing on a Cinderella story as described this morning by their captain Fennick. Certainly the underdogs, but at the moment I think they're tackling from memory, some of them, as Hegarty kicks the Jura. He may let it go over the dead ball line, but it's a very deep one at the cricket ground. He can't afford that luxury. He's got to bring it out. And De Jura is tackled on the line. And that was a better chase by Manley, wasn't it? They got the ball down into the end goal. De Jura tried to run the ball out. And a good tackle by Manley forced him back in goal, necessitating the line drop out. 22 to 14. 22 and a half minutes to go. Sudden death football, there's nothing like it. 15,800 here today as Hegarty uses Melrose to take it back, then backs him up. But he's flung to the ground by Neville. Carey comes to dummy half, gives it to Melrose. Now it's with Gerard. Oh, that was a good, solid hit by Ackery. On the South 22 line. Now it's Harvey's turn, but they're swarming in over him. I think the player that can turn this game for Manley is the man one off the ruck now, Phil Blake, and Bob Fulton will be looking for him to get himself involved. He's a potential match winner, but not if he keeps out of the play. Horton is tackled. The crowd roared for a penalty. They roared for the uh, penalty from the Shepherd. Thompson passes, picks up Des Hasler, and Hasler is tackled, and that's the turnover. That's the turnover. Ackery plays it. 
Boyle runs with it. Voughton makes the tackle. But I don't think Voughton has been himself since he took that, uh, that clout on the head. A couple of times he's been beaten badly, Paul. This is Rampling. Souths have just got to play safe football, slow football, and stick to the pattern that has been so successful for them, not only in this game, but in preceding events. Fennick, a lot of dummy half stuff, a lot of first pivot running. There's no need for that sort of stuff. This is a live ball, this one. Miscott is tackled. Four gone. Miscott with that knee heavily strapped. A cartilage operation a fortnight ago. Boyle. Boyle, 10 metres from the halfway, and now the kick. It's almost one, two, three, four kick. Where's Baker? I'm looking for him. Here he is, and there it is. The torpedo punt down to Hegarty. He takes it 15 out from his own line. Out past the 22 and the 32, and now he's tackled by Hardy. And Hegarty losing it. And that's the thing that, of course, Souths are happy, hoping for all the time by trying to play percentage football. 6-2 the scrums to the Rabbits, 5-4 the penalties to the Eagles. Make the penalties now 6-4 to the Eagles. Back here tomorrow, of course, for Parramatta and St George. And our Brisbane viewers, you, you won't have the luxury of a live coverage of that one, I'm led to believe, but you will see that match in your normal local time slot for Rugby League. Uh, tomorrow night, you'll see the Sydney, the Sydney major semi-final tomorrow night on O in Brisbane. Bostead, Bostead trying to win it on his own. He's 15 metres out, and Souths have to turn around and go back. I think Bostead still got the ball. No, it's come up with Souths. Well, he must have ruled that Bostead tried to play it ahead. Bostead's hurt. He can't get up, Bostead. It's his shoulder. Fennick is down. We've seen Rennick Fennick rake the ball back time after time in the play the ball this year, more particularly on Tuesday night. And I just wonder how first grade players would allow it to happen to them. It's a very simple fundamental of the game, and it just shouldn't happen. Well, it was a contest between the two men, keeping in mind that once the ball is on the ground, both players can strike for it. Well, Bostead's been brought off by trainer Ronnie Bowden. He carries in a lot of pain there. He's got no feeling in that right shoulder. The Manly Club doctor has been called to the sideline. I think that's Dr. Bob Heim down there. A worry for Bobby Fulton. Not that the scoreline isn't a big enough worry for anybody. 22 to 16, and Andrews for Souths is tackled. And as we suggested early in the second half, it's in the department of kicking where Manly have allowed South Sydney to get on top of them. Manly have now only kicked the ball on on eight occasions, and Souths have kicked it on 18 occasions, and each one of those has been a spot-on ground finder. Oh, gee, I'm just looking at Kerry Bostead through the binoculars. They're trying to put it in this temporary sling at the jumper, and he's in a tremendous amount of agony down there, Kerry Bostead. And what they will need to do is get a player on the field as quickly as they can. They just can't afford to play South with 12 men. Baker continues to drive this South Sydney vehicle. It's a very simple one to drive. It's an automatic at the moment. And Manly at the moment, honestly, they need a miracle to get out of this. This other side, South, are just so pumped up. Out comes Davis for Manly. South are just so pumped up, and they've got this eight-point lead as a cushion now since that great kick from Baker. Here's Ackery. Players in the South Sydney side, honestly, that people hadn't heard of at the start of the year. Rampling. Fennick is a dummy half. He could even run from here. He does it often. There he goes. Just a few paces out, taking some heat off. Baker hits it inside for Boyle. Boyle is tackled. And they're about 20 metres out from the Manly line. They're going to put on their Wally move, I'd say. It's Baker coming to the open. But it went a it went to ground with Baker. Coleman now positions himself for another hit at it. Hardy had to lean forward. He puts up a bomb. McCarthy's after it. Pressure for Hegarty. Niscott was held back. And it's forced in goal by Manley. And a line drop out for the Eagles. 
two to one on the Eagles this morning. Twenty-two points to fourteen in favour of South Sydney. The dropout is along the ground, and Baker's going to take it back to the ten-metre line. The shallow dropout was used by Manley. Dangerous place to be using shallows. It's out to Coleman, now to McCarthy, and Darren has almost gone through. He's tackled by Paul Vorton, who I'm absolutely positive is tackling from memory, Paul Vorton. Here's Coleman. He's about ten and a half stone ringing wet Craig Coleman and could easily go round in the Melbourne Cup if he wanted to. Drop goal by Baker was uh, touched in flight and it's gone over the dead ball line. Off a manly arm, so it'll be a line drop out to restart. Neil Baker finding the arm of Des Hasler. There's the drop kick. Hegarty sending it very deep. A big, big kick. And Harrington goes back with it for Souths. And watching the time, 16 to go, and Harrington. He went out there feeling strong, but I think he's playing with more strength than he actually possesses at the moment. The adrenaline would be just pumping. They'd all be so feeling great, South Sydney, at the moment. They realise they've just got to keep playing safe, but at the moment they want to play razzle-dazzle stuff. Neville, inside for De Jura. And De Jura to play the ball. Back to Mario Fennec. It's a penalty for South. He was felled as he tried to get up and run with it. And Baker will put this over, I would think, and basically put the seal on this one. Well, the way the match is going, you'd have to think another two points. Manley couldn't handle that. South are now starting to throw the ball about and build like you'd expect Canterbury to be doing. <laughs> Well, I'm sure that their coach, Ron Willey, would prefer them to play a little bit safer, but you get away with what you can in a football game. And looking at the enthusiasm of these South Sydney players, the captain, Ziggy Niscott's in the middle of them now, revving them up any, even further if they need it. And uh, if they can get further points, they're going to. There's some wonderful people in the game of rugby league, but we're just talking about Ron Willey. I don't think I've met a, a more cooperative man a nicer man anywhere in the world in sport than Ron Willey. And I say that for the benefit of people who don't know him personally. He is an, an absolute gentleman, Ron Willey. Well, Baker can enlarge the scoreline advantage to 10 points for Manly out the South, which would mean that Manly would have to come back and score two converted tries. Or give or take a drop goal. That's about the size of the situation. Baker, he's already kicked one from this angle before, and he's missed this one. And it's in the in goal area, and McCarthy goes up there with Neville, but Melrose runs over the top of them. And it's away to Phil Carey, and David Boyle makes the tackle. That's a good run by Manley. A very good run by the Eagles, Tony Melrose. Away now to Cochrane out wide. It's oh, Vorton's put it down. Knock on by Vorton. Well, this great player, Paul Vorton, he's had some unhappy moments in this one. Fed by Coleman, one by South. They're getting clean heels. I'm not sure about the feeds because we're not getting a good angle on them from where we're sitting. As I said, we're 10 metres out from the South's line in the second half. Well, the scrums are 7-2 in favour of South Sydney, and with that, with that sort of possession, they've had plenty of opportunities to kick the ball, which they've done, and uh, they've made great advantage with it. Here's Rampling, head down, backside up, and just taking it ahead. Out goes Fennec from dummy half, and so he stands, and he offers it, and there's Rampling, finding oxygen that he didn't think he possessed. He's got it within 7 metres of the Manly line. Played back for Bill Hardy. They're going to put it over, I think. No, Baker decides to step. Then he kicks. Baker will score himself. Oh, no, it was plucked out of the air by Hegarty. He looked a million to one on Baker to score. And now it's with Stuart Davis for Manly, who came on to replace Kerry Bosted. And there's the Baker kick. I thought he was, a, as I said, long odds on to get it back and score. But Hegarty was there to save for Manly. 12 minutes of time remaining. South leading by eight points. Harvey taking it ahead. 
but of course the gusto of these big manly forwards is not there like it was say in the first 20 minutes or the first 30 minutes when manly looked just so superior here's cleo and they've got him around the legs and managed to stop him long enough for a couple of a couple of their workers to get in there and make a tackle david boyle in particular he's worked himself to a standstill blake kicks that'll find touch will it no it's well in field going back for it is bronco de jura he won't get trapped in goal this time he's got his winger harrington with him but he won't want to pass he tackle he's tackled about seven or eight meters inside the 22 line plays it back to harrington for a dummy half run harrington to the 22 line and uh, in goes neville now to dummy half the doctors have replaced that uh, shoulder dislocation of Kerry Bosteds. Apparently it popped out. The doctors have got it back in. 32 metres out from the south line. Ball played by Ackery. A little stooge off there by um, uh, Fennick, and it's hit to the blind by Hardy. And Fennick again gets to dummy half. I think they've had four souths as Fennick goes for a dummy half run. And then will be a hand back to Coleman. Coleman looks for an opening. He finds Neville. Neville tackled by Close, and now Baker, Baker will kick as Schubert comes on in 15 for Manly. It's back now to Coleman. Coleman finds Baker, and there's the pattern. Pretty simple stuff. Big kick. It's beautifully placed again by Neil Baker. And here's Davis with it for Manly. McCarthy's there to try and stop him. He can't, but Boyle is there, working right to the end, together with Andrews, one of the South's replacements. It's fed off to Tony Melrose. He crosses the 32-metre line, but he's tackled by Mario Fennick, who's been a shining light there for South today. It's gone now with Chris Close, and he's trying to pummel his way up the field after scoring a try early in the match. Close now plays it. Five metres on the manly side of the halfway. Cleo goes over the halfway. But these South Sydney Rabbitohs, they're hanging off the big man. They know who the danger men are, and they've done their damnedest to try and keep them quiet here this afternoon. Here's a run from Mal Cochran. He's inside the 32. The support arrived, but it was a fraction late from Phil Blake. The timepiece says it's inside the 10-minute marker. And it's South Sydney leading by 22 to 14. Manley's Vorton passes to Melrose. Melrose is inside the quarter. He's got Hegarty unmarked. It's a try. Beautiful football by Tony Melrose. Beautiful football by Tony Melrose. He held that ball up. And he held it up some more. And Hegarty was in the score, unchecked, and see it again on the NEC replay. From Vorton to Melrose, McCarthy dropped off Melrose and left him to the inside man, but the inside man couldn't get to him, and the winger had to come in and take him, and that's where all the trouble happened. It was Bill a well, Anderson. It was a well-timed uh, pass by Melrose after he made the initial break. We can see the ball goes here from Vorton to Melrose, McCarthy stays off him, he realises he's got to stay out as Manly have got extras, Melrose did well to push through the hole, once he got his nose through, he got his hands free, gave a well-timed pass, a well-weighted pass to Hegarty, and he does the rest. So, Hegarty scores for Manly, and Paul Vorton is off for Manly, Schubert is on, this is a big kick for Hegarty, 22 to 18, He's out on the sideline. Dave Brown's coming down for Manly. They're pulling plenty of the big names out. Here's Hegarty. It's a good-looking kick, but it's, it's, it's just got across the uprights. So Manly has to score again to equalise and then kick a goal or a drop goal. Or we'd go into extra time of 10 minutes each way. 22 to 18. Girard is off. There's about eight minutes of time remaining. Can Manly come back? Can South hang on? Just the two questions. Well, South will be looking to pin Manly down in their own quarter and then kick a field goal. Manly, conversely, will be trying to get the ball as quickly as they can down into South's area and then get possession back. Baker sending it down, spiralling over towards the wing where Hegarty, Davis and Schubert were. And Hegarty is tackled just outside the Manly 22 and we again have a ball game and it's been lost in the play the ball well that's exactly what I was talking about Manly could ill afford that error but that's they've come up with it and now they're gonna have to work hard to keep South out so the scrum will be fed by little Craig Coleman Fennick has caused a heap of trouble with striking for the ball on the early tackles 
fed by Coleman, won by the Rabbits. Gee, he's got some clean heel, Fennick. He's had a he's had a bottler of a game, Fennick. Both in the scrums and the open play and defence. So what more can you do? This is Andrews. He's tackled about 15 metres out. They'll keep it pretty simple, South, and set Baker for the drop goal, I would think. As it goes across to Baker, it's gone to McCarthy, and McCarthy has tackled about 20 metres out from the Manly line. The dummy half is David Boyle. He's facing towards the blind side. It's gone to Coleman and on now to Hardy. Hardy goes up to about 18 metres out from the Manly line. The ball will be played back to Neville. Neville decides to come back towards the uprights. He sat on his tail there. Baker's behind the play. He may go for it. They'll try and charge him down. He gets the bomb up instead. And they go through after it. Hegarty's above the pack and he takes it magnificently, Hegarty. Ziggy Niscott appeals to the referee for infringement. And uh, there's Hegarty on slow motion replay. A beautiful take by him. Play just inside the Manly 22. And again, Fennec strikes for the ball. He's, he's quite a bit of kick it ahead rather than rake it back too. This big man is David Brown. He plays the ball. Blake goes from dummy half, but Hardy's got him. Looking at the timepiece, there's five minutes and 45 seconds remaining. And Blake, Souths are leading by four. And Blake's the man that Souths are going to have to keep their eye on. He must be ready to explode. Schubert loses the ball behind him. Hasler goes across the ground. He's chased and hit there by Baker. Hasler to play it. Just outside the 22, they're on their last tackle. Uh, Manly, Hegarty kicks. And Hegarty's kick is going to find touch. Midway between the 22 and the halfway on the south end of the field. semi-finals and finals as good as this one we're gonna we're gonna have um, an absolute feast of uh, nail biting on our hands Coleman feed second row feed penalty manly it's as if the script has been written for this one to go right down to the wire so differential penalty to manly the timepiece continues 445 and counting South leading by four. Manly, can they come back? Trailing by four points. South, can they hang on? Two questions. That's all. Cleal mauled over by these uh, South Sydney players. And by now, I reckon Bobby Fulton and Ron Willey have called for sedatives for themselves, not for the players. Here's Schubert. Schubert again mauled over by the South players. It's with Dave Brown and Phil Blake and now Alan Thompson. And Alan Thompson runs into the hole, gets it to Hasler, a handoff. Play on, says the referee. Not backwards. Four minutes to go exactly now. Four minutes exactly. Manly down by four. Cochran goes from dummy half. He bumps them off. There goes the ball out to Harvey. There's a chance here for Manly. Melrose has lost it. Oh, he was over the line and lost it. He was across the line and lost it. The South Sydney coach, secretary and president almost fell out of the grandstand. Niscott, Niscott can't play the ball and the referee calls timeout. 3.38, 3.38 the timepiece has stopped at that count. There it is. Bobby Fulton. Listen to the South Sydney chant. Unbelievable stuff here at the cricket ground. Officials are going out to send some of the fans back in front of the Bluwongo concourse area. Exuberant South Sydney fans. They can't quite believe it, that they're here with any hope at all. Nobody said they had any hope. But they're leading by four points. Fennigal, the dummy half runner. He's taken by Dave Brown. He's 15 metres out. South Sydney swallowing up time. Fennick trying to get to his feet. Plays it back to Boyle. Another dummy half run. They simply have to do this. It's dummy half run and kick. That's the, that's the recipe. Boyle tackle. Ackery will do the same. No risk one would think. Here's Ackery. A little dance. He's out to the 22. Now Baker. Baker will kick. The Marcus will go for the charge down at double tempo. There's the pass, out to Baker, and there's the torpedo punt. It's a big one, straight to the fullback Hegarty. 
It's got to have a big chase. Manly are on one of their last sets of six tackles, and Higgity has tackled. He's 10 metres on his own side of the halfway, and there was plenty of enthusiasm in the South Sydney tackle. It's with Davis. Now Blake, he shapes the kick and holds it back. Can Phil Blake pull it out? He's got the pass to Thompson. It's gone to Melrose. Melrose slick passes. He finds Thompson. Thompson has tackled, and he plays the ball. And away they go again, and it's Phil Blake again, and he's tackled. 15 metres into South Territory. Two and a quarter minutes of time remaining. It's come from uh, Cochrane out to Harvey. Touched by South Sydney. Six more tackles as Hegarty has tackled. Three metres on south side of the halfway. Excitement supreme. It's out with Schubert. Schubert has tackled. It's to ground. It's uh, with Cochrane. It's gone from uh, Hegarty to Davis. Davis, 10 metres into South area. He's tackled. And it's uh, one minute and 50 seconds to go. It's passed from Cochrane and gone to Blake. And Andrews makes the tackle on Blake. Now's the time for Manly to spread the ball. They've got extras on the left-hand side. Chris, Hull, Chris Close is looking at a hole. And it's uh, the clock in the right-hand top corner counting it down. As Hasler goes to the 22. He passes in desperation. And Manly have still got the ball. Manly still with it on five. They're outside the 22. And uh, it's not really a bombing situation here. Thompson floats it. It's gone out to Schubert. Schubert is uh, through one, passes, finds Davis, and Davis is tackled on five, and they're still not really in a bombing situation. Here it is with Blake. Up goes the bomb. There's not a great deal of pressure there. It's with DeJura, and DeJura's going to try and bust back, but he can't, and it'll be a line dropout. So, 55 seconds of time remaining, and DeJura going down with cramp. Shades of the 69 grand final looking on the reverse side of things. Balmain and South, wasn't it, in 69 when Balmain were accused by the Rabbits of slow motion football. Look at Dempsey Joy with his head in his hands, Fulton talking to Secretary Tennyson, and South Sydney with the line dropout, and the clock stopped at 48 seconds. And now counting. Baker takes the line dropout. Back they go. They need a good chase. It's 40 seconds. It's uh, with Higgerty. He's up to the halfway. 23 is on for South as Melrose tries to make the break. South Sydney, the underdogs of the semi final, fives them. Can they hang on? Harvey run around Cochrane, kick ahead by Cochrane, out on the full. And I'd say that is thank you, linesman. Thank you, ball boys. 16, 15 seconds to go. The Hill crowd has gone berserk out there as they uh, now can see that South Sydney have got it. They've got the feed. They've got the feed. The crowd is counting down. The referee not happy. The siren has sounded. The siren has sounded. He's ordered the scrum. It's out the same tunnel. He's going to play this scrum out, referee Chris Ward. It's in there. South have won the scrum. And that's the ball game. No, no, yes, it's over. South Sydney have won the sudden death semi. South have won defeating Manly in a sensational game. Maybe the boil over of the season. 22 points to 18. 22 points to 18. Mario Fennick, my goodness, is he excited.